Hello and welcome to another episode of Never On Side. Hi, this is Joseph, and joining me as usual is Mayur. And this week has been a splendid week for all the United fans because we have won our um, a major trophy after five years, I guess. Last one was under Mourinho, um, and uh, when Slatan and Mourinho combined to give us the Europa League and EFL as well, and also. uh the <laughs> i still remember the mickey mouse trouble that happened with us winning the community shield as well so this is uh, by far um one of the best seasons after um, uh, after ferguson has left and um, it was an amazing game and let's get into the premier league uh, matches and what all happened in and around europe and also let's discuss uh, the united game so i'll start off with the um, reaction for the win so it was so till the last moment i was hoping that we would hold on because so this might be the start of something big because once this team um realizes that they are capable of winning they might go on and win one or two more trophies and they are in the running right now so so that is something that i thought always lacked under solskjaer where uh, the team never they were never convincing enough to win titles they it's not for the lack of uh, not being in the finals they have been in a couple of finals where, with that young team but it always felt as if we didn't have enough to you know cross the line and win it and in this uh, match particularly you could see that the signings that we have made so far which are probably some of the most established signings we have made like in the sense that martinez was already established in ajax and uh, antonio was also established casemiro and veran who were you know uh, instrumental in madrid uh, being so successful lately and uh, so it was such a great turnaround but you have to think that um, it was um successful the rebuild was successful because these players were not like young players who just started out playing or like big talents like mudrik uh, but these were kind of established players who who have done it who have won trophies with their respective clubs and that showed very well in the you know, match as well because we were in control as soon as we scored both the goals we never looked like losing but as a fan you would always wonder like when is this going to turn against us but it was a splendid uh, victory and the scenes afterwards also was very um, you know very endearing when um, eric canag was dancing with uh, martinez and, and uh, anthony and also when eric canag uh, brought in um, all his staff and celebrated with them Uh, so there was so much unity between the fans uh, and the team and also with the staff and there is no doubt that only one person um, is on the wheel right now and it's Eric Tanag and he has complete control over the um, over the team this doesn't mean that maybe um, next year or towards the end of the season we might not have a slump but we can have a, a bad period but at least now we can see the progression which is happening and uh, winning a cup is the cherry on top yes and the main thing was uh, the turnaround considering uh, you played us in the europa league and uh, the amount of time right. which you had even though uh, you had a less amount of time you uh, like tena cleverly just sat back and played on your uh, like uh, strengths where you could use marcus rashford and antony to go behind the uh, line high lines which generally like uh, newcastle likes to play so newcastle this season hasn't been great on their attacking front but they have had like a very great defense and high line is something they have played and got results to but that is what i would also like to say is tenag has really like he has got those players but he has used them really well apart from that like he has got those players but using them is one part like he has really right. uh, that is what he has got gotten right this season where mm-hmm. like sometimes where you haven't played the best of it like even this match wasn't like you wouldn't enjoy uh, the match seeing as a ten hag team but he is grinding out those results getting out those results from whatever players he has and like he will definitely improve from right. here but yes coming in the first 7 to 8 months and doing this is really yeah. 
So another so thing that you like about him is that he doesn't complain much. Imagine if this was um, if this was Mourinho or Van Gaal or Ole, they would have definitely said like. So this is something that I really like about. Uh, Injuries which were happening. Eriksson was a big miss, uh, like lately, and also we we'll, uh, miss Casemiro in some matches as well. But he never complained about that, mm-hmm. and um, the likes of uh, Shaw stepping into uh, the defensive, um, uh, the centre back position, and also Vergos uh, stepping into the number ten uh, role almost. Uh, so, so those kind of tweaks that he makes have all gone um, like. Kind of in our favor, but it could have been it could have backfired also, like in terms of his man management also with um, what happened with Sancho. He uh, so uh, how much was he for around one twenty million or hundred million somewhere Sancho was for, and you can't expect him to be you know sent to uh, Netherlands for training um, while you are expecting him to start every game and. Play really well for United, but uh, Eric Ten took the decision and uh, executed it. And also Rashford being benched um, uh, when he was late for uh, the training and the meeting as well. So, and then Rashford came out and scored. What if it would have been the other way around? United lost that match, then it would have been uh, much more scrutinized. But yeah, so everything has gone in our uh, favor after the first two defeats. Uh, but this is still a work in progress, and I hope we can win at least one more trophy this year. Yes. So let's move on to uh, the Premier League games this week. Now from the club EFL Cup. So let's start with the games on Saturday. First of all, I would uh, would like to say a few words on the Leeds new manager Javi Garcia. So. Leeds, who were struggling a bit, uh, had quite a few good replacements. But being in mid-season, they weren't able to get any good managers in uh, replaced for their uh, uh, previous manager. But they got in Javier Garcia, and the first match was okay. He got the result. Uh, there were some g- tactical uh, changes as well. But let's. Uh, it will be interesting to see how they turn it around. They have a lot of. They have a lot of good players, and it will be really interesting to see whether he can get the result. So let's move on to Arsenal Leicester host. Right. You saw the match. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very interesting match. Um, Arsenal coming off uh, some difficult runs and after winning the last match, everyone was looking if they could um, you know, continue the form. And it was a tough match against the Leicester side who you cannot predict what is going to happen, especially at home. Uh, sometimes they turn up, sometimes they don't. And uh, for the first half, it was pretty even. And um, you could see that in transitions, Arsenal uh, had some difficulties coping with the likes of, uh, you know, Barnes. Uh, so, so that was the game was open in the first half. It could have gone like both teams could have scored, but um, in the second half, uh, uh, Trossard uh, made a good uh, run through the left flank, and also Martinelli um, came and scored the goal. It was a super finish by him. And uh, the question always was, will Martinelli and Trossard uh, take up the same position? But they they are showing that they can do without, you know, sharing the same position. They have uh, played in a way that um, Nkitia was benched because I think he had a knock or something. <laughs> and um, um, Trossard, Martinelli and um, Saka started up front with Trossard playing uh, somewhat like a false nine or like as a striker, so Trossard and Inkit and um, Martinelli used to interchange position as well, and that's how they got the uh, goal. And it's a good result for Arsenal. They keep grinding out results like one zero, uh, like when it's required, and um, they have City hot on their trails as well with uh, convincing win over Bournemouth, and it looks like City without. Mares and uh, even De Bruyne played really well with Alvarez playing on the right um, and also playing nearer to Haaland. Pep has said that uh, uh, Haaland plays much better with Alvarez because um, Alvarez creates a lot more space because the defenders have something more to worry about other than Haaland. 
so city also look really good so these two sides are um, absolutely cruising now and um, united is trying to keep pace with them but um, realistically it would be between these two sides for now right as you mentioned the uh, uh, trossard point uh, it the rotations looked quite similar to when jesus used to play with martinelli when nkt used to play it has been like nkt has been the one and only number 9 so uh, the rotations weren't as fluid yeah. and for city uh, again there were quite a lot changes uh, we saw a lot of player uh, who like to run onto the field uh, rather than having the ball to their feet so a lot of that kind of players were played in this match and we saw the result gundogan who has been really uh, influential in those playing those little balls uh, in between those lines and everything real influential and he has come on in on his form though he's not getting the assistant goal on paper but he has been the key person to get so right. let's move on to right. the right. sunday games uh, liverpool crystal palace <laughs> liverpool just when we thought liverpool might be back on something uh, we saw this uh, crystal palace also who has been struggling uh, there actually uh, liverpool has been doing the same and same mistakes over and over again so it i don't know uh, there needs to be a few and a lot of changes as well in that team because we been seeing same things happening over and over again in the midfield part in the defense part van dijk has lost right. a lot of form alisson also uh, sometimes like has been uh, guilty of giving away the positions so liverpool struggling quite a lot uh, and host uh, the last game spurs chelsea you saw the game yeah yeah so i saw some parts of the game uh, you know chelsea were uh, dominant in the initial phases they were <laughs> trying to be uh, on the front foot uh, with uh, the likes of um, you know um, the defense the main issue that happened was when um, thiago silva got injured till up till that point um, chelsea was uh, very confident in position uh, and they were playing really well uh up front with havertz and um, sterling started on the left side which is a very good boost for them because they don't have anyone who you know stays wide uh in chelsea so so that was something that they were missing in the last games and they started very positively but eventually when um, thiago silva was um, injured and taken away uh, i think fofana replaced him and after that spurs started uh, coming into the game in the second half and uh they scored uh, two good goals um i think harry kane scored the uh, first one uh, uh the second one uh, and the header uh, one not sure corner. who scored the first oliver skip scored it? i guess oliver skip scored the first goal ah skip scored a brilliant goal yeah, yeah. Uh, a worldy of a goal from skip which put um, spurs <laughs> ahead yeah so so i think we had a similar game last time like chelsea at home and spurs away which was a nil nil game i think and that was one of the worst games i've seen this season but in the reverse fixture at least uh, both sides showed some inter- uh, like some you know some uh, intent to win the match but spurs came away with the uh, win <coughs> chelsea for chelsea the main issue is they don't have anyone in the uh, penalty box when required you could see balls being sprayed in but there was no no one inside to finish it havertz keeps um, you know drifting away and uh, so that is a big concern for chelsea now the question is when um, does uh, bolly uh, decide whether to sack uh, potter because this is kind of getting out of hand this is kind of embarrassing after spending so much and also it goes back to the question who signing were these uh, players the 50 not players who came in because uh, for me this doesn't look like a potter signing uh, so that is something which is concerning yeah so the main thing is i think chelsea is very disjointed they don't even the players don't know what to do they just try to play from the back and if it's not a possibility they just hoof the ball up into the penalty box or something like that and hope someone comes at the end of it so it's a very disjointed team but uh, uh, there is a irony in that if you had to go for a manager who could get all those youngsters to play well probably potter is the one who is familiar with that kind of role so i think uh, yes that's a question when he will be sacked but i think what's the worst can happen from here right they might finish two or three places more down the table right so 
keeping Potter will be the main thing, I guess, and hoping he gets those guys glued up together and get some kind of basic strategy here and there. But as of now, they are very disjointed. They don't have a strategy how to use those players. They are just hoping someone comes at the end of those balls. So it will be interesting to see uh, whether the days are nearer where Potter is sacked or uh, they still go on with him. So for this game week, there are still two games remaining. Uh, Arsenal, Everton and Liverpool Wolves, which will be played on Wednesday uh, and Thursday early morning in 